Welcome to another episode of Pure Bliss and Balance, a place where we can learn great strategies to live our most resilient and happy life by integrating mind, body, spirit connection, and by meeting amazing heroes doing great changes in the world to make it a better place. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today we're going to introduce you to an amazing guest speaker. And also, we're going to let you know that we're going to dig deeper into the discussion we start today over the next few weeks so that we can help support our global family and our children and youth have their most resilient and happy life. Our guest speaker today is going to help us discuss the hard topic of how to overcome grief and trauma, come out on the other side more resilient, and yes, find joy again through her own personal journey as a mother having experienced loss. She's on a mission to empower our global family to have hope by realizing the power of mindfulness and wellness and how it can help you overcome all kinds of challenges. Without ado, I'd like you now to be introduced to the amazing Barbara Dertina. Welcome, Barbara. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really, really looking forward to hearing more about all the wonderful things that you do in your local and global communities. And maybe we can start with a little bit more about your background. What do you do? Uh, because I know you've got a lot of expertise. Um, I've done, since I'm a little bit older, I've done a few things in my life. And I, I started off in education and working with young children, early childhood education. And that has always been a, a passion of mine. And I always find myself um, going back to the children and health and wellness and growing into the best that we can be. And I've always been a seeker and personal growth. And I think one of my talents that I had noticed very early on was noticing behavior patterns. And especially with young children and how that will manifest maybe later in life or what it was trending. And of course, when I was really young, I didn't necessarily notice that. But when I was about 10, actually, uh, my, my, my last, the last child in our family was born and my grandmother came to visit, came to live with us and she was doing these old world European things. And I'm like, oh, these, this child is really going to have some issues. I remember thinking about that at a very young age. I mean, at three, he was still sitting on her lap and being fed. And, you know, that was her wanting to nurture. And, and, and so I realized later on that I, I tend to see behavior patterns. And for me, I'm always about prevention or heading things off before things get more difficult. And so, you know, I brought that into uh, teaching and got married, had uh, a couple of children and um, really supported my husband in, in his career and such, and then found myself in a divorce uh, situation. And I wanted to be the mom you know, I, I waited a long time to have children so that I could be home with them. So I found um, that there were some wonderful channels of bringing health to people. And um, I had started off in a, a different area and I was always about, let's get the toxins and other things out of our, our and I'm in the US and we, we really have a lot of uh, chemicals and toxins. And, uh, you know, I was um, in the hippie era and so, you know, really worked with co-ops and, and fresh food and food chains. And, you know, we did a lot of that bulk foods, you had fresh things. And um, so I've always been felt, you know, really bent that way about how can we feed our bodies to have health. And when I was young, actually, um, you couldn't advertise pharmaceuticals or anything on TV. And so fast forward to today, I feel like we're such a pharmaceutical driven society, but I think it's starting to change because nutrition is health. And I found myself being introduced to um, a product line that's nutrigenomics, which is activating your own body processes. And it is a new trend of a new paradigm in health. So that's really exciting. Um, and then another factor that I found very, very significant is our emotional well-being. You know, we are really caught in a, a society of, um, you know, we're in fight or flight all the time and we're not meant to live that way. We're 
and I know in my childhood, I grew up with this low level anxiety at all times. There was just chaos in, in, in certain ways because my mother was a very worried person and you're always on edge as a child. And so I really lived always on edge and really to feel serenity and calmness and such, um, I've had to learn. And I had an, a very big traumatic event happen in my life after getting a divorce. Um, and my 15 year old daughter ended up taking her life. And I never could have expected something like that happening. She was acting out. I, I knew from a toddler, she was a very, um, uh, um, very emotional and, and we had uh, tantrums and, you know, I was always seeking help for her and trying to find, my background was early childhood education, but I could never for her figure out a pattern. It was really amazing. And, and I also was dealing with a husband that didn't believe in, in getting help. You know, it's like, don't talk to anybody, don't do anything. And I'm like, it's a child, there's something going on here, but I could never figure out. And when one child is a, um, uh, I can't even think of the word, high con not high conflict, but takes all the energy of the family, really. The other children can often suffer because so much energy goes into someone who's really acting out a lot in the family. And so I, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, how did this happen? Whose life is this? And, you know, when you have a, a significant event happen, um, you know, it shifts you and you change. And I was changing, trying to help her. And I believe that she, she was really a brilliant, intellectual, out of the box thinker. And in our society, it's like, get in your box, you know, get in your lane. And I, I, I couldn't wait for her to be an adult because this child was going to do something big. Like, you know, I couldn't wait to see when she could fly and, and be on her own and do what she, uh, what she was on track to do or what she would find because she was very avant-garde and really had so many interesting ideas. So, of course, after something like that, and with different events that happened in life, the economy crashing at different times, and uh, I was in a lot of survival mode and trying to really make peace with my other daughter and, and keep things together and find my way and deal with heavy, heavy grief. I'd never experienced any kind of death like that close in my family. Very elderly grandparents, you know, in their 80s and 90s but nothing close to me and my family. So here, and, and there's a stigma and, and there's a lot of collateral damage when you have that kind of a death. And as a mother, it's like, how could I have not saved my child? Um, so I realized how much, and also working with holistic products and such, you realize how, many, how much damage um, all of this emotional, trauma and sustained trauma does to your body, to your health, making decisions. It affects so many different things. So that led me on a path of, um, I need to look at this. And I also was shown some techniques for my own self to deal with mindfulness and learn how to meditate. And that it was a really saving grace and a big practice in my life now and being quiet and healing. There's so many ways of, we have to heal all the, all the things that have happened to us. Everyone has experienced traumas in their life, big and little and all kinds of ages. And I also knew and felt that my daughter had passed me a baton, that my story is to help others and to save lives. And I look now at, you know, the trends with children, younger and younger, not seeing a way out, taking their lives, you know, between social media, very distracted parents trying to make ends meet or very involved with their careers, um, uh, just so many different factors. And so I've waited for a number of years to be able to speak out thinking, how do I do that? How do I make this story told? And when I do, I knew that it would affect my other family. Why are you talking about this? You know, people don't want you to hear 
the vulnerability or to tell your story because it reflects on them and they might not be in that realm. And so it's taken me a few years to um, create my voice, but I've always felt this urge and passion and I'm an open person. I, I, for me, it is a light to share and to have some good come from this, have some good to help someone else. And uh, right before um, my daughter's funeral, uh, a psychologist had said, you get every teenager there, as many people as you can, because they need to experience this. They need to see this and, and, and know finality. And I know at those ages, we think we're invincible. And so I felt a very big responsibility to use this moment to help others in my pain. And that's just who I am. And it's healing for me to be able to share my daughter's life because I don't want her to be forgotten, but you know, no one really around my family, it's like, don't mention her name or don't say anything. And I'm like, this is an incredible child that, that really changed the course of my life. And at that funeral, actually, kids were coming up to me, telling me their friend had tried this, they tried this, or they will never do this again. So I know there's been a ripple effect. I might not even know the lives that my child's life has touched. In fact, my name is a little unusual as you were saying it, Jennifer, um, because there's three consonants. Dirtina, it's D-R-T. So my name stands out. And I remember being in the grocery store and there was a bag boy and he just, his eyes got big and he looked at me and it was like, and I said, yes, I'm Aaron's mom. You know, so you don't even know all the people that are watching and looking. And so I've had friends and other people also watch me walk through this. And I didn't know if I could ever feel joy and happiness again. And so I've been able to find that. And one is through my nutrigenomics company, because the business model is one of raising people up, of service and helping and bringing and educating other people on other ways of treating your body and your health and what's available. And also now I'm bringing forth the, um, and had some training in healing trauma. And there's many ways now. Talk therapy is sort of not necessarily the way to go. You're reinforcing your neurotransmitters in your brain. You know, you're, you're getting in that groove of all the time saying the same thing over, changing your story. Each time you bring it up, you're really traumatizing yourself again, or you're shifting it with a different slant because now you're in a different place than when that occurred. How helpful is that? So I'm so grateful to have been shown other ways through mindfulness, through uh, chakra healing, through NLP, through there's many, many modalities to bring that trauma up. And what I realized for myself was I couldn't fill it with love and joy and other things because there was so much pain there. And so I feel that it's very, very huge to um, make awareness, to, to show awareness that we really need to heal this. When my generation, it's like you stuff it, you know, talk about things, you stuff it. Well, that is not healthy. and our body and our energy fields are filled up with negative, negative things that are there, whether we think they're not there or not, they're all there in our cells. They've been imprinted. So I know as I have done this work over, I'd say 20 years, I feel lighter and happier. And what I know today is that no matter what happens to you, because I've heard some horrendous stories of so many things that people have gone through in their lives. Um, that you can overcome these things and become, become a stronger person and a more joyful person. And I remember that my psychologist um, I was working with through, we don't talk about grief. That's a whole nother thing that in our culture um, is not a, a, as spoken about as in other cultures. We need to go through grief processes. And he said, you know, as, as, um, as low as the valleys are, then the higher the mountain is that you can feel joy. And that really gave me hope. 
that one day I would be able to feel the joy. And now, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and different global things happen, I know that we can always create joy. It's up to us. And we can always create that uh, gratitude. And right now, it's really a moment of resilience and teaching.